Stories are the way we understand the world, but also a way we understand the world we can imagine as well as the world we've got. There is one great central story, which is that of God's dealing with us in Christ, the death and resurrection of the Saviour, the breathing of the Holy Spirit. That's the great story. So don't be surprised if you find the echoes and glimmers of that all over the place. Imagination. The Latin term is imago Dei, the image of God. And fantasy is about opening us up to something deeper than our reason can fully grasp. I can think of several conversations at a deep level with students that I've had and talked about Harry Potter and Gryffindor and Slytherin, and, you know, and like they've immediately gone, oh yeah, yeah, I get that totally. Lewis and Tolkien, as great storytellers, as great poets, great makers of myth, were the unacknowledged legislators of the middle of the 20th century. So you work your way back, back through C.S. Lewis, Tolkien, back to George MacDonald, Scottish minister in the mid-19th century, the father of modern fantasy literature. He has a special love for fairy tales, and I think that's partially because they assailed his soul. The George MacDonald stories are full of a sense of holiness, but the holiness, the heroism, the moral underpinnings are wrapped up in this beauty and imagination and delight. You look at George MacDonald, Tolkien, now look at C.S. Lewis, and they are Christian writers. They, they didn't see a problem with using your imagination. They really have tapped into something true, good, and beautiful. It's timeless. Devils and dwarves and dragons, and the struggle of good against evil. Jesus defeating death, going down into hell and breaking open the gates, as it were, setting the way free for us, is the true meaning of any story that's ever been written about stealing treasure from a dragon.